Hey everybody, thanks so much for listening to the 200th episode of the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Kevin, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey there, my name is Evan. I'm a dumb dad. Hey buddy. Hi bud. I realize we don't have anything to cheers, and we only have water. And we'll do water. Hey, congratulations. We've made it 200 podcast episodes. We started this business, uh, this podcast, right before my son was born in 2019. Yeah. It was a little build up to being a a dad of two. Yeah, we started the podcast. Wow, in 2019, that seems crazy now to think back. When we first started doing the podcast and wanted to just sit down each week, that was the thing. We knew we had to sit down and commit each week. We cannot miss. Mm -hmm. We can't do what the other podcasts have done, which a lot of people that start podcasts do. What do they call it? Podcast fade. Oh yeah, we heard this term the other day. Podcast fading. Yeah, where you think, I'm going to start a podcast. Uh And then you start a podcast and you do two episodes and then you forget about it and it just becomes too hard and you stop doing it. We front loaded like five of them. Uh Uh-huh. Well, we knew you were about to have a kid, so. And then we, yeah, then we took a break, and then I feel like we had a rocky start for a while. I feel like we had we missed a couple weeks starting start, a podcast. I mean, it must not have been, <laughs> it must not have been that bad, because if we made it two hundred and my son is four, it's like all right, we did we did pretty good. Fifty two weeks a year, missed a couple of weeks. Done like, a podcast before, <laughs> I think it's pretty good. I feel like we did all right. I think the mailbags helped us catch up, but yeah. So here's the thing. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to kind of quickly do a little bit intro, warm up. Well, do you have a dumb dad moment this week? Do you have a 200th episode dumb dad moment? I can't honestly couldn't think of one. My brain oh. has been so occupied with working on this, trying to figure it out. That's probably what it is. It's just, yeah, negligence of your children. Negligence of my children, yeah. <laughs> I think they're here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. There's some kids running around. There's some kids screaming in the backyard. Hopefully, it's our children. I think that's the attic. Um... <laughs> I did have one. I'll I'll just get into the dumb dad moment real quick, and then we can move on to the questions and stuff. Sure. The one it happened today, so we might as well go into what happened today. So our so my uh, my kids have wanted to do Legend of Zelda for Halloween. They're doing that thing the kids do where they're like locked and loaded in months in. We know that something's going to come up two weeks before. Let me stop you. Yeah. My kids are locked and loaded on trying to figure out a Halloween costume, but there's changes weekly. Have they always been that way or are they yes. locked in? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no. I, I don't was... know how your kids are like, we know what it is. When is it now? Is it is it now? Is it now? Is it now? And they just have the one idea and they stick to it. I don't know how. Yeah. Annie, I'm only calling you in because you're here. What was the one that Lucy, she was going to be Rosie Revere. Didn't you want to pivot to something L- uh, last year? What, what, what was it? Do we remember? It was a witch. Mm. We had, we got her back, but it was like that. Yeah, I think is tough. another as a kid thing where they're like they they or they know what they're going to be for uh-huh. whatever, maybe a month or two weeks in advance, and then the, the day before they're like, actually, I know what I want to be. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, what? So that's what we're prepared for. Um, but right now they want to be Legend of Zelda. My daughter wants to be Zelda, sure. and then the, my son wants to be a Korok. And then for those who know the game, uh, my daughter, because I'm what she calls a big fella, <laughs> um, which is a bluey thing. To call your kid a big fella, uh-huh. tell your dad a big fella, mm-hmm. but uh, she goes well, because you're a big fella. You need you should be a Hinox, which in the game is, is a, a giant, gigantic one arm monster. monster that can't like has a vest that there's no world where that vest is closing, <laughs> like pants that are too small because it's just a big monster. And he's like, kind of looks like a pig, I guess. Kind of looks like a pig. He's bumbling buffoon. Anyway, she's like, you, I mean. Oh, dad, that is. Type a, that is you. <laughs> if there's a live action film, you are a lock. <laughs> so anyway, so she wants to be Zelda. Sure. In Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda has short hair. So she wanted to get a haircut. And she got uh, she got a, she got that in her head. That's the, the basis of why she wanted to get a haircut. Your daughter's hair is so long. So now she's super committed to this. Yeah, so, so she... She yesterday was like, I want to cut my hair and I want to cut it like Zelda. I want to cut it short. And we were like, okay, great. And she goes, great. Do it now. And last night. <laughs> this is like, actually, well, oh, brushing well, your teeth is the next step. Hold on. This evening. Um, and then because we like, we're, we're still parents of fairly young kids that so we get excited when they get excited. So we were kind of like, oh, I don't know. Should we? Should we stay? No, we definitely shouldn't. We shouldn't. And, you know, like we were entertaining it. And then we were like, uh, and then we, my wife and I like, well, pulled a bluff. 
what we would say sure it was like um well we can't do it maybe maybe in the morning was it yeah it was like maybe in the morning and she was like okay we'll do it in the morning we're like if you get up cut to 5 30 in the morning no <laughs> my wife and i woke up a little early to get some work done she walks in the room and wide awake yeah told you i'd wake up early let's like cut, the let's, midday energy yeah midday energy yeah. okay let's cut this hair i mean we're the, you, that could have been the dumb dad moment <laughs> but we were like maybe it should have been <laughs> Maybe it should have been. Maybe it's like a half, an early. But we were like, no, no, I'm sorry. We lied to you. We're not going to do that. Because yeah. <laughs> we were like, we're not professionals. Neither of us are professionals. My wife cut, um, the reason why my daughter had such faith in us is because my wife cut my daughter's hair, where if you've listened to this podcast long enough, my daughter during the pandemic took a nice huge chunk out of her hair. Yes. And then um, this woman was so kind to FaceTime with my wife who did have like to like proper proper like haircutting shears. Yeah. Um because my wife was ready to cut her hair because we were all like locked in our houses not going anywhere. So she walked her through how to like fix this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was wild. So uh yeah, it was pretty wild. And um so my wife does know how to cut And they hair. also now assume like, oh mom cuts our hair. Exactly. Yeah. The one time now means you do this forever. Yeah. So we were just kind of like, if you want it, the way you wanted to get it cut, and it, we don't think we can do it. So anyway, long story. Now we're done with school. She gets out. She's like, walks out the door and goes, I'm ready to get my hair cut. We're like, all right. Are you sure? Because like, we're waiting for that thing. Similar to kids changing their mind at Halloween, you're waiting for that thing where they panic and change their minds. Yeah. Like that's make the first clip. <laughs> yeah. So she kept saying, like, I'm nervous, but I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm nervous, but I'm really excited. So we didn't want to make an appointment with anywhere. So we called a couple places. Um, some of them were just like very expensive that we were like, oh, I don't know. She is a, a child. And then um, some places weren't available. So then we just drove around, found a place, uh, went in. My daughter's like, I'm ready to go. I was like, you sure? She's like, yeah. You don't want to build it up. Mm-hmm. You're like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. She starts cutting the, the hair. And the woman there is this uh, older woman. And she is <laughs> just, I, I don't know. I think she's just one of those like, uh, old school doesn't think women girls should have short hair and she's like what do you mean she wants it short and i was like she wants it like you know like shoulder ish length not a bob though like kind of shoulder ish length yeah and i showed her pictures of real people not zelda i wasn't gonna make that <laughs> mistake uh we found photos and was like do you like the daughter was like i like that so so many narrow misses of yeah. stuff you could have done yeah so then the woman was like how about we cut it to here? Like she really didn't want to cut it. And I was like, I took the bait on that because I went, you know what? That's a great idea. It's let's, a lot harder to put it back on. Than exactly. It to take a little more off. So let's do that. My daughter agrees. So yeah. uh, cuts my daughter's hair, does a good job. And then it's done. And my daughter's just so excited because she got like three inches taken off, like yeah. four inches. And <laughs> the woman's like, I think this is great. This looks great. And my daughter, uh, I was like, are you happy with it? She goes, yeah, I think it's great. And we we're like, okay. And she goes, it's a good first start. It's a great It's a great first start. And I was like, what does that mean? And she's like, no, I'm happy. I think it's great. And then she looks at me and she goes, we'll cut it more at home. <laughs> and you're like, no, we, no, we won't. And I was like, uh, your hair's still wet. Like, let's let it dry. <laughs> It'll get shorter. We'll cut it more. We'll cut it more at home. <laughs> Don't worry, um, Dad. Tip her. She tried. <laughs> um, and then I was, it was this moment of just like, ah, oh, should I ask the woman? To, uh, this is the dumb dad moment. It was the panic of like, yeah. well, I know she wants it shorter. Mm-hmm. Should I ask the woman for shorter? And we're kind of doing this like three way back and forth of just like, I'm happy with it, but it's not what I wanted, but I'm happy with it. And the woman's like, this is better than what you asked for. And I was like, I feel like, and then the woman goes, you don't want short hair. She'll look like an old woman. And I oh, went, wow, we, I went, well, that solidified that I'm not going to tip her <laughs> get, have her cut any more hair <laughs> yes. because if you live in a world where you think short hair is only old women then you don't know how to cut short hair and we need to get out of right. here right also do <laughs> you think the little girl is going to look like an old yeah. woman <laughs> you think we get a discount the other way on movie tickets she's really not that tall or old or anything yeah. what are you talking about <laughs> check aarp we could start cashing those checks like, what could we get away with yeah exactly <laughs> what kind of plucky um whodunit catch me if you can can we get away with here and the senior discount please yeah <laughs> for the old lady <laughs> 
So then we got home and, and, and my daughter was definitely like waffling back and forth of just like, it is a good start, but we, I want to cut it now more. And we were just, we, we kind of got her back to the point of just, she's, just, she's happy with it now. She's kind of like. She's happy when we got here. Because it was drying, because it dried, which makes it go a little shorter. Right. And, but uh, yeah. That's a mistake I think a lot of people make. My dumb dad moment there. was like my lack of, I don't like confrontation. So I was just kind of like, oh, is everyone at least somewhat satisfied? We can leave now. I just am trying to avoid anybody raising their voice. I don't want to tell uh, this older woman that uh, the, the patriarchy got to you and stop <laughs> putting that on my daughter about her hair. I'm so uncomfortable. She wants me. to shave her head. Let her shave her head. But we're not even asking not for that. We're literally asking for Tears of the Kingdom Zelda. <laughs> She's like, who? I've never heard of Zelda. Okay. She's like, is that a oh pop singer? And I was like, kind of. Speaking of old ladies, God, get a switch, why don't you? <laughs> So, yeah, that was my 200th episode dumb dad moment. That's pretty good. That's a good one. You didn't do anything that stupid. I think you probably held your ground pretty well. Maybe after 200. I mean, I didn't. She definitely wanted her hair cut more. <laughs> and I was like, I want to leave. But she didn't. But you didn't ever cut it. That's the thing. Like, She did you cut could, her hair. Could, could been, you could have come home with the you not realizing it gets shorter when it dries and Right, and it also could have been the thing where I put my foot down out the gate, and then this pa- person who only thinks you cut hair like an old woman, now cut it like they, that. Cut it like that, and it was yeah. like, which I don't even know what that means. And then it's you like, have like a four-year-old and a seventy-four-year-old yeah. children. Yeah, <laughs> or it looks exactly like Zelda, and I was like, oh, she thinks that's an old lady haircut. That's good. I mean, this is one of my. Uh, I'll say it was one of my favorite things to do is to each week sit down with you and do a dumb dad moment, something that we did that was stupid. We've had 200 of them. We've had more than that. But had way each more week than that. we pick a dumb dad moment that we've done. And, uh, you know, I will just say, again, I will say cheers to making it to 200. To 200. Um, I, I definitely look forward to this chat every week. And what's funny is, like, we sit down and write together and film together and everything. But whenever we sit down to do the podcast, it feels like this is like when we sit down and talk I guess, if that makes sense. We talk and goof around all the time, but this sure. is like when we get to, like, get to sit down and kind of like talk about parenting, how it's going, what you do. Mm-hmm. And we reach out and say thank you to all the people that listen to the podcast, that thank have supported you us all this time. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Listen, you. And uh, <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> we just appreciate all the support everybody has shown us. Yeah. And so speaking of the support, people have shown us we have some questions before we get to the real hot those button the, questions okay uh yes we have a couple questions yeah, real that got quick sent to us. real ahead. quick go ahead we asked you guys to send in some questions for our 200th episode we'll do a couple of these questions okay first just to kind of get <laughs> warmed up <laughs> warmed up nice warmed up so let's see garrett k on instagram wrote to us and said what's the best birthday party you remember having as a kid Best birthday party, which is a great question. I remember question. having as a kid. Um, you know what? I don't remember a ton of my birthday parties. Yikes. I'm the same there. Here's the thing <laughs> that's a nice thing, though. And I know my mom's watching this screaming at the camera because she tried so hard. And, and I spent saw a lot the, of money on it. And here's the thing I saw the family videos, and that's probably like. What I love is seeing those videos of us. Yeah. She would set up the uh, picnic table in the backyard and had like the neighbors over and friends over. And uh, those are so cool and wonderful. Um, the funny thing is, is that I was the youngest and I don't remember <laughs> most of the parties, which is a nice lesson to all of you out there. Uh-huh. Stop beating yourself up about the birthday parties. Or feeling like you need to have this huge, extravagant birthday party. I mean, you go, where you... Do you I remember your year. birthday parties? I did it this year. I went, we rented the bounce house. The kid wanted the bounce house and everything. We made it happen. Mm-hmm. It was super fun. Maybe she'll remember it. Maybe she won't. Hopefully she just remembers having a good childhood <laughs> because I'm the same way. I remember probably moments of when it was my birthday, having your friends. I think it's like the early birthdays. I'll say this, especially mm-hmm. the first one. The first one is for the parents, for sure. Of course. 100% for the parents. Yeah. I think that bleeds all the way into like three, four, maybe five ish. Mm-hmm. Then the kid can really start to determine. I want to have this theme for my birthday. I want to do this on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Um, and those are the moments I remember, like being with my friends. Um, you know, like playing a home run derby on my birthday or something like that. You know, you don't remember. I don't remember anything. I literally Just don't remember what Just I had for breakfast, Kevin. All right, here's yours. <laughs> 
What's your near miss dumb dad moment? My near a uh, near miss dumb a dad near moment? miss. I definitely remember this one. This is when. This is back when my son was our only child, had one kid, and he was like an infant. I mean, we had not had a kid for very long. Okay. And my wife's worked from home for a long time, and so I was, I don't remember where I went. I went somewhere, and I took the boy with me. <laughs> and he's in like the little <laughs> car seat. And the we, boy. Yeah, took the boy with what me. a weird old man thing to say. <laughs> took the boy with me. It's not really I took the boy with me, right? I start this jalapeno. We went to the horse track. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And ne- nearly, lost. nearly lost the boy. That was my moment. Um, and it was like, you know, groceries or whatever it was. It doesn't matter. The point is, I come home and feeling good about myself. Uh-huh. Like, you know, when you those early trips, especially when you go out by yourself, you're carrying the car seat on your elbow and like all this kind of stuff. And I think what happened was I had like the fleeting moment of like unloading the car first. Mm-hmm. And before the words even finished coming out of my mouth, I realized what I had said, but I had like emptied, let's say the groceries in the kitchen, whatever. And I turned my around and my wife and I go, where is he? Oh, and she was like in the car. And I was like, right. He's in the car. Cause I took him. Mm-hmm. And then I had to went out to the car and got him cause I had taken him. I mean, that is a dumb dad moment. It is a dumb dad moment, but like it could have been worse. And, yeah. <laughs> but it scared me so much. Yeah. On my way out to get him. I was like, that kind of stuff cannot happen. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. that was the only time anything like that ever happened again because it was scary enough, even in that fleeting moment of like, that I had kind of lost track of him or where he was in that moment. Scared the hell out of me. I'm sure it's the only time you've lost track of him. Again, I'm sh- I think he's here. <laughs> I think he's here at your house. Do you have one? Can you think of a near miss? A near miss that I have is when we went to Disney World and we, uh, the kids, my uh, youngest had expressed interest in going on a goofy ride or my daughter did. Either way, one of them piggybacked off the <laughs> other off this like roller coaster at Disney World. And my wife did not think that was a good idea. Mm-hmm. And I, in the back of my mind, I knew she was right. But I was like, ah, oh, they're real excited though. <laughs> Let's try it. And she was like, I don't think this is a good idea. And <laughs> ah, I, what do you want? Doesn't want I know in the back of my mind, I was like, I, I, I think either she said it or I said it. That it was like, I will deal with what happens. Uh-huh. Um, and oh, it was <laughs> like, if they're broken, I'll have to. I'll, You're on this family vacation, like as if she wouldn't have to deal with it at all. Well, no, I know. Great, I, I'm going to go on rides by myself. I'm not, not going to go like, I'm going to go to the gift shop now and get a <laughs> postcard. Um, people still do those. <laughs> but. Yeah, it worked out. They both absolutely loved the ride, but it was uh, it was a dicey one. That's good. It was a dicey one. Okay, we got another one here from, I don't know what this is, Javish M eighty eight on Instagram. Okay, <laughs> how do you feel knowing your podcast helps us dads feel uh, okay with our dumb mistakes with our kids? Which is a super nice comment. I will say that. I mean, terrible. We don't have kids. Uh, it's all been a lie. Oh my gosh! Big surprise. Um, it's very nice. Uh, that is, uh, that's nice to know. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Um, we, yes, uh, thank you. We, we certainly, when we do this, we did this uh, to kind of just two guys to talk when we started the podcast, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of talking about our day and week and didn't even know how to build a podcast. I had no idea. And it was not really growing. And then when things started going on social media and the podcast came with it, um, that was one of the things, I don't know, maybe because I am a dumb dad, a dumb person, um, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting such nice like comments and people being like the, the, the nice things that they say. So we really appreciate when you guys say that. That helps also motivate us and um, makes us feel better about what we're doing and on the, on the hard days. So thank you as well. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think both of us are kind of has have always been in love with like self-deprecating humor. That's kind of where some of this comes from. Yeah. The tongue-in-cheek idea that we call ourselves the dumb dads, yeah. meaning it's just because no matter how involved yeah. you are as a parent, you're going to feel stupid because you're going to make a lot of mistakes because you've never done it before. And you're always kind of flying by the seat of your pants is what it feels uh-huh. like. And the more specific we would get over stupid things that we would do or make a joke about it and talk about it honestly on the podcast or make a joke about it in a reel or a TikTok or whatever it was, mm-hmm. the comments that would come pouring in like, I've done that before. Thank you so much for saying so. Now I don't feel as bad. 
is uh, overwhelming to say the least, and we appreciate that much. It does help us continue to do what we do because we love offering that little bit of reprieve to everybody out there that follows us. So, we do. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. We're one more? A couple question. more? We're going to do this last one, and we're going to get out of here because it's an easy one. Okay. How many more kids are you hoping to have? Uh, that would be zero. Nothing. Zero. That would be zero. No more kids. No more children. We, uh, we're done. We're tired. We we tied. We got tied up. Not tied yep, up. The game was what called. What did they call it? They, we both got vasectomies, and that was not a big deal. And we got vasectomies, and there will be no more kids. No more kids. <laughs> I don't know how to say it any better than that. That's the answer. We're doing fine with two. I can't imagine three. God bless the two plusers. That's true. Three plusers. That's All true. right. So uh, that concludes this part of the podcast slash live Let's move on to the real the real hot portion welcome to the 200th episode live hot ones challenge that's right join us as we attempt to dance 20 wings it's funny they don't look that bad oh, i know I they're terrible hold, we're still recording right yeah we got you saying that <laughs> oh i know they're going to be i just mean i guess i just imagine like red to just like this the surface of the sun okay all right, guys, we are going to start off with the classic hot sauce. It's a chili maple. Okay. Um, let me see. It is a heat level of 2 out of 10. It doesn't say the score rating. Let's go for it. We don't got to read the whole thing. I know, but I And these are already cold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wing one. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to do the, uh, the bone down push. Oh, I can't do it. They're too cold. Mm -hmm. Slide it down. Go for it. Okay. Clean your wings, guys. <laughs> Time. Okay. First question. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a story from your childhood your family always tells you about? There's one I can legally tell. Um, <laughs> I lived in uh, Drake, in Massachusetts, where I grew up, and we would get, you know, you get mice in the house. That happens. <laughs> Everybody gets mice. Okay. So I think especially if you leave the door open and food lying around. Yeah, we were just we're, we're cheese fanatics. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we, I think we did the snap traps, and I think my parents moved to glue traps, which are now like we now know they're not great. I we know that now. <laughs> <laughs> we are aware. So one got caught in the glue trap, and my parents and I was young, and it was like one of those moments. Uh, they hate this story, but they tell it. <laughs> okay. The mouse was alive, and they were like, "Kev, you're the youngest child. You should uh. go m kill this animal." Um, oh, yeah. You're the youngest child. It's not. That wasn't their exact words, but they were like, <laughs> you know, it's it's trapped. It's gonna, you know, it's, it's gruesome what they do to themselves when sure. they're in those glue traps. So I was like, take it out back, put it out of its misery, and I was like, with what? We not. <laughs> I'm a young boy. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? How would I have any we, idea? We don't own do. any firearms, and they were like, "No, no, no, no just uh, use a rock." Um, <laughs> so we had it in like a uh, either garbage bag or a shopping bag. Like I couldn't see what it was in there. Yeah, but all I knew was that I was not gonna, as as uh, Alexander Hamilton said, "Throw away my shot." <laughs> okay, so I put it in the ground. And then I took the biggest rock my small, frail body could <laughs> hold. And also the flattest rock. Uh -huh. It was a perfectly flat rock because you don't want to catch like angles, right? Oh, I guess so. I have never thought this through as much as even you Because I don't want to. Like all I'm imagining yeah. is like. You want to catch it The clean. scene from like Austin Powers where you like drop the rock and you're like. Huh, and then you hear like. My, ah, my leg. My <laughs> leg. hurts so bad. It's still like, broken. But I can So I lifted the up. rock well above my head. Okay. Absolutely. Brought the hammer down. Oh, um, wow. But um, I learned a lot that day. Um, <laughs> but listen. I, uh, and they like to bring this up to you all the time. They brought it up a few times. Um, <laughs> it's a fun one to bring up. Let's start Anybody with a lighter hearted one for me. Um, oh, God. You're perfect family. Let's hear it. Yeah. the uh, I was in charge of sweeping the back porch. Actually, I think it was because I was about to have a birthday party. And I was in charge of sweeping off the back porch. And... I was, this is also on camera too. So it's like, not only do we like get to relive this all the time, but it was like with the 80s camera mm -hmm. captured. I'm in my birthday off and I'm all excited. 
my mom's kind of interviewing me like, what are you doing? But I'm getting ready for the party. And you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm probably all of like, I don't know, eight or nine years old. Mm. And I have the broom and I'm sweeping, <laughs> I'm sweeping. And I see like a crane fly in the corner. You lifted a big rock on? No. Oh. Oh, okay. No, I thought, let's just get this guy out of here, mm-hmm. you know? And so I kind of jab it a couple times with the broom to kind of just get, as if I needed to move it for the party or something. This well, thing, the space is reserved. Yeah, this thing didn't appreciate that move and flew directly at my face. Oh. Direct, like kamikaze at my face. I freak out, throw the broom, and take off running. And I do like, I mean, I do like a lap around the backyard. <laughs> like I'm being <laughs> pursued by a rabid dog. I would retell that story as well. Uh, screaming. And uh, yeah, caught on film, everything. It's such, it's not a good look. <laughs> it wasn't a good look. Not a good look. And we like to talk about that one all the time. <laughs> Let's move on from that. Let's move on to our second sauce here. What do we got? Curry Verde, mm-hmm. a Thai green curry hot sauce. Okay. Number two. So far, so good, I will say. That's nice. Yeah? You doing uh-huh. okay? I'm doing fine. All right. I think maybe later I won't be doing fine, but so far I'm good. All right. I have a, I mean, it could taste a little heat, mm-hmm. but I'm not. Not sweating yet? Not sweating yet. All right. Someone asked, uh, Maureen uh, wrote on Instagram, how do you stop crying when your baby goes off to kindergarten? I would love to know this answer. <clears throat> I struggled. <laughs> I struggled. It's pretty perfect for you. As much as I struggled as much as my little girl dropping her off at kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah, this year, dropped her off at kindergarten. Did you keep a brave face till she was gone? Oh, yeah. You didn't cry in front of her? No. Okay. She was crying. She was teary eyed the whole time, waving at me, trying to keep it. To- she wasn't holding it together, but she's trying to mm-hmm. keep it together. You could see her kind of just like. You know, bracing the whole time, just constantly waving, constantly waving, like awkwardly, doesn't know what to do, just mm-hmm. crying the whole way, cried all the way out of my sight. Yeah. And then um, I turned around and got in the car and bawled my eyes out on the way home. Oh, like wow. hard. I knew it was going to happen. And I thought even still leaving there, I was like, I just felt so bad that the, I mean, there's, you know, she's not the only one. There's other little kids that are just so afraid and you, I know I'm going to see her at the end of the day and I'm going to hug her and then we're going to talk about her day and mm-hmm. we're all going to get used to it. But I, I mean, you know me, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I, I sometimes just cannot get over the moment and I couldn't get over the moment that really felt like, and we had kind of talked about this on the podcast yeah. before that it was like, I'm really feeling like this is the, this is the end of little baby children. Yes, she's five. She had turned five going into curtain garden. She hadn't yeah. been a baby in a long time. But there's no excuse for it anymore when like she walks herself into school. Yeah. And yeah, I was a I was an absolute mess on the way home. So do you think you're gonna be a mess like uh when the kid goes to like high school? Because then then you're just are you gonna keep moving the goalposts of just I don't well, know. now little little kid is gone. I oh. don't know. I n I'm not sure. Uh but Stuff like that just really gets to me. Mm-hmm. Really gets me. I I try and practice as much as I possibly can. Live yeah. in the moment. Be there for them when they need to be there. Sure. But that was a mess. My son was uh, because I am. So I'm from Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Irish Catholic. I wear my, my country. I wear my emotions in my <laughs> socks. Um, <laughs> you keep them so you can. I wear them on my mice so you can bury them. <laughs> Uh, that's where I wear my emotions. Yeah, yeah um, nice. uh, my son was really easy. That wasn't hard for me. I know it was hard for my wife. Um, I mean, it was sad to see him go. I remember it was harder for my daughter. You and me, Annie. It's hard. Um, I'm going to get there now. I think I'll be crying in about four wings here. That's, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that has nothing to do with the children. Um, <laughs> but um, my my I remember my daughter was hard, and my wife just came across this video the other day where... We we forgot about this where we were really shaky with our first going to school, yeah. going to kindergarten because she did preschool, but then COVID happened, so then she was back home all day every day. We were all home all the time, and mm-hmm. then she's going off to kindergarten, and um, we dropped her off. And I'd forgotten about this, but our youngest started bawling. We have a video of it because we took a video of her going into school, mm-hmm. and the youngest was just like crying, was so upset, and that's what crushed us. Like we were like brave face. 
she was already inside. So our daughter didn't, our daughter didn't see us get upset, but we were brave faced. But then when he started doing it, we were like, we got to get out of here. Like This is all going really bad now. Just seeing his like, see them love each other is even, it's so much harder sometimes. See them love each other, but also see him. He's much younger than her, has no idea where the hell is she going? (laughs) <laughs> right why are we just is sending that her away for, is this forever yeah is she moving out because she has a bag full of stuff that's all he's thinking she's got a lot more stuff at home i think we should have given her some more yeah. stuff you gave her it's one. been nice knowing you you gave her one lunch <laughs> and then she's got to figure it she out she has to figure out dinner that's how wow you guys are tough have you seen her color? That's why. You How is she going to make food? I told you to give her a big special breakfast. Let's move on. We are now into, oh, zesty lemon pepper. Ooh, exciting. Hot sauce. Give me right there. Boom. And here. Lemon pepper. We got, hold on. This was first. Thank you. Thank you for that request. Classic. Yeah. First, second, and, and then, there. And then as Evan. Let's move them down a little bit so we don't forget to like talk about which one we're, which one we're on. Thank I you. like it. Thank this you is, a, is there anything interesting going on in the chat also that we need to know about? Do it sure. now. We can do it now. Okay, well, we take a bite here. Yeah, go for it while we're eating. Okay, go. Victor Hugo asked, what is a thing you didn't expect you would enjoy as a dad, but you enjoy so much you do it as often as possible? Whoa. Something that we didn't realize we would enjoy as much as a father, that we enjoy so much we do it as often as possible. Uh, spending time with children. <laughs> <laughs> really thought it wasn't going to be for you. Yeah. <laughs> really I really thought... I was going to just be a real toxic male and just kind of sit this out. (laughs) I'll be back for dinner. Have it on the table. Why are you watching ESPN? I don't even know what's going on, but I'm not talking to the children. Get the kids down. What are are, are they doing back there? Having fun. That's a great question. (laughs) I mean, I guess I'll circle around to liking it again. Um, I love playing at the playground with the kids. I think there's certain things I didn't think I would jump in with. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sure this answer is going to evolve throughout this session because it's a great question. Um, but I think all just like the little things like doing puzzles with my kids. And it's not it's not just like the sentimental having fun with them. Like I'm genuinely like, I can't wait to beat this puzzle. <laughs> it's just like the little things that you got to get excited <laughs> yeah. with them on. Um, I, I get excited with. But I don't know. That's a good question. I want to think about that. What's funny about that, too, is I think there's a there's a, there is an answer to the opposite of that, which is you'd think – You'd love to play games with them all the time and play mm-hmm. with them all the time. But you forget that they're growing and learning how to accept uh-huh. things like losing as well when you play with them. And I still enjoy playing with them, but it's harder than I thought it would be to play something as simple as like a board game when they get when they when they're little and they get so upset losing something. That's something, something you want to do like, all the time? Is no, no, no. I'm saying the, uh, the, the opposite Lord. of that, actually, that yeah. I thought would be fun all the time. Oh, sure. That you have to kind of grow into learning that, yeah. like, they struggle Terrible. with it as much as you didn't... I didn't think that that was going to be, like, a problem, thinking, like, yeah, board games are fun. Let's play a board game. And sometimes it's, like, a struggle when they're like, can we play a board game? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> because they've already been kind of at each other for a half an hour, you know? And it's like, this is not going to go well. I will say one... See, it's already kind of involving... There are parts of it that I hate, and I complain about it constantly. And if you're a listener of the podcast, you know this. But I actually do enjoy being on the PTA. And I d- obviously did not think I would. Uh huh. At It doesn't carry a very good reputation. It doesn't carry of... a very good reputation. There are things about it that infuriate me to no end. Uh-huh. Uh, but the fact that I get to go on school campus to do things and be active in the school yeah. is definitely something I never thought I'd want to do. Should we sneak a question in now, um, considering that was, or should we, is that a wing question? You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't have to wing question. Let's do a question, okay? Okay. The tablet's broken. What's your survival strategy? We have a phone. I'll tell you what, it's not board games. We have a phone. <laughs> you have a phone <laughs> and a television. And a couple of video game systems. Um, depends on the age, but um, I also have a laptop. Depends on the age. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> device central. Um, Surround yourself with devices. I have a Nintendo DS that's somewhere in um, the closet. I can probably charge that up. No. Uh, <laughs> that battery's toast. I did remember during the the Tropical Storm Hillary when we were batting down the hatches, we were ready to uh, like, my daughter and I played like Legos 
for like three hours straight. I thought it was really fun. Uh, Legos is a good go Lego. to when they're at. You just say Lego. I don't care. Oh, well, um, they're, they're get, you're gonna. It's people. Lego. I like playing Lego. There you go. Um, that's a good one because I think if they're at their age, that's a fun one that can kill a lot of time and then kill a lot of time and it's fun to play. And coloring and painting. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next wing. Next wing. Which what is Next it? Next wing. Uh, this is Chile Lengua de Fuego. Laguna. Laguna. Do you guys know uh, the pushdown method? Learn it on TikTok. Do you know uh, the pushdown method? I know the pushdown method. Right. The, the host of Hot Ones knows like Annie, what you come each over here one. Push down method. No. What are you shaking your head at for? <laughs> what am I being a dad over here? <laughs> Educating people on how to eat wings <laughs> on the internet. Okay. You got to do is look a guy in the eye. Okay. Next question. <laughs> what is the worst part of the bedtime routine? Is it, all of it is kind of the right answer. Um, that one had some heat to it. Now we're moving. This is the first one that I can feel it. <laughs> There's heat there. There's heat there. We're now we're moving. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing: we're in a tough. It used to always be brushing the teeth because you got to floss, got to brush the teeth. Um, getting my kids to do it is like pulling, pulling teeth. And it's very annoying, but uh, so but now books are kind of getting annoying for us. Like we really, yeah, we haven't found like. Here's why. Um, we're kind of in like that thing where we're not on books that we all like. Like we're kind of in that phase. Yeah, this one's boring. I want to read this one. Well, this one bores this one. Yeah. So you're kind of not having fun. I want to do the voice of this one, and that, and that is just it's just kind of a snowball effect. So I am kind of all over the place with it. But we're in a wonderful uh-huh. uh, loop right now of Mo Willems, where it's like we'll read a uh, pigeon. Don't let the pigeon jar the bus. Or wasn't the question a pigging and Gerald? Like, was how is your I'm life sa- better than mine? I know. Um. But we're in a wonderful <laughs> uh, rhythm of that right now. We're like we'll pick two of those, read them. They love it. The part I struggle with, and my wife normally sits with them uh, at bedtime. I'm normally not permitted to i'm permitted for stories what but then we when we sit with them they're like we want especially the youngest wants. you're not permitted by the children yes well my son is fine he doesn't he would like me to sit there but my daughter really wants my wife to sit there so like once a week maybe i'm allowed to sit there (laughs) while they fall asleep the start the part that i really struggle with even when i'm there and i know my wife struggles with it is when they don't fall asleep we want to wait we usually sit in the room with them until they're either asleep or very close uh huh. Sometimes they're just chatting away. Okay. You know, chatting away. What's questions. the longest you've been in there till they went till they fell asleep? Not like you fell asleep in there. Ninety minutes. Okay. When they're like, or as my son is. Sometimes my son has difficulty falling asleep because as soon as he closes his eyes, he thinks of something scary. Starts the cycle all over again. He gets really nervous. Has to go to the bathroom. He comes back. It's like over and over and over. The whole time we're thinking like, I just I had a long day. I just want to go to bed. How come you guys but don't I know leave? If I, Huh? Why don't you leave? Well, because in a situation like that, well, uh-huh. normally it only takes, especially with school, they get tired for school sure. and everything. It's like 10, 15 minutes maybe, you know? Yeah. But when in a situation like that, if I go to bed, my wife goes to bed after that or whatever, he's just going to come into our room and interrupt us a bunch of times while we're trying to sleep or sure. play a game. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So in that case, it's just like, I'll just sit with him here so he feels comfortable you in his bed. sit with him with a cowboy hat, like over the eyes, shotgun across the lap. <laughs> When he starts to sneak out, you go, where do you think you're oh, yeah. going? He's like, I thought you were asleep. <laughs> oh, where are you headed, partner? Uh, yeah, so that gets a little difficult sometimes. Okay. Great. Main question. Oh, do I get a main question, too? Yeah, I'll do, do a main you... question here. What's the one parenting mistake you could wish you could do over? Ooh. The one parenting... Oh, having children. Mm-hmm. You? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel super ashamed of any like one major thing. I don't think. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> you have mine for me. No, I think your kid's therapist has yours. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I just don't know it yet. <laughs> it will come much later. Believe me, it's there. It's your subconscious. It's hard to think about anything if you're like. Uh, I think my my big one was when I was talking to my son and I told him. We were having a nice casual game. I thought he was a little too young for this talk. And kids bring up everything at every age. Yeah. It's not like, I'm ready to talk about this, so I'm going to bring it up. They just say things, and sometimes you can brush it off. And my son brought up uh, death. And 
he was like i think he said something like i i hope i live forever you live forever something like that and i was Mm -hmm. like well nobody lives forever he might have even said a thousand i was like well nobody lives forever uh and he was like uh will i live a thousand years and i was like you won't live a thousand years but i hope you live a really really long time and then he was like am i gonna die and i was like yeah someday and we're so far it's very casual yeah the whole conversation is very chill and (laughs) he was like looked at me eyes filled up like cartoon wells yeah filled up and he was like i'm gonna die and i was like "Uh uh-huh and he was like what do do i come back and it was in the saddest voice that it could not recreate yeah and i was like yep 100 percent. you come back where what oh look i got two t-rexes your turn (laughs) like just just punted the ball i would probably say that's a good i could i'm trying to think of one moment but oversharing information that they're not ready to hear is a really good one. I Sometimes shared you just think like, can't get that back. And then my wife had to fix it when uh, my brother and sister-in-law's dog passed recently. And he was like, well, he's coming back. He's going and she's back. like, oh, nope, he's... nope. He didn't of buy extra lives. That, that was it. That was the game over. That. All right, we are moving on to moving on. N- number five on the roster here. Uh, Los Calientes. Yep. How about you? How about you? We'll do it this way because I have a question for you. One I've w- written for you specifically. So you eat while uh, I ask it, okay. so you can think about your answer really quick. You just want to see how I react to this. Correct. Okay. Ask <clears> the question. I know when you were younger. Mm-hmm. You used to like to watch Dick Van Dyke with your dad. Okay. Yeah? So, see, this is also a great way to, like, have me on camera while you're eating. Because we should just pass, pass by that part of the <laughs> So my question to you is, which movie do you think that you would like to see Dick Van Dyke be in, like, currently, that you think he would, he would kill the role? I mean, I don't know, Cocoon. He's, like, 100 years old. What do you no, mean? I mean, like, in his heyday... <laughs> Of his comedy, what would you put him in now? Did you say movie? Yeah. Or maybe you could, yeah, maybe a TV show that you think he'd be good in. But I don't know. I bet he's very talented. I guess I could see him doing anything. I could see him in like a Tom Hanks, like any kind of Tom Hanks role. I feel like he could just play those roles maybe just as well. Um, He just has that likability. Even when he's a villain, you're like, ah, you're all right. Uh, <laughs> the heat is you felt the heat on that one even more no yes we yeah. are taking steps <laughs> we are we are you weren't expecting that because you made me go first i was like no reaction let no him, reaction let him find out on his <laughs> no own reaction. let him find out on his own um i don't know that's a good question i don't i'd have again that'd be one i would have to think about but i mean i just think he's kind of a, a very versatile um i did see a video of him recently on tiktok i think it was from like 20 20 or something but he was on like a stationary bike and he started the video by saying hi i'm what's left of dick van dyke <laughs> <laughs> and i was like he still got it <laughs> that's really good okay what's next, this one next sauce the spicy shark eat the heat it's a great uh bottle design so i'll start new read all right what was a oh <laughs> i smelled it burst don't know if I should have done that. He's having a hard time here. Yeah. What was a moment that you saw someone else, like another dad, and you can't give us the suitcase story, um, where you saw like another parent doing something, and it could either be, I'll give you an out here, it can either be like, oh, I wish I had thought of that, or, oh, good to know. Like a kind of a smart dad move, if you will. So not the suitcase carrier oh. that you guys have where you carry the car seat. You've told that one before. <sighs> Answer quickly. Okay, I'm now. thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> I think anytime. I guess I'll go for mine now. Go for your wing. Anytime I see a uh, go for wing, we're tingling here. The mouth is tingling. Uh-huh. Anytime you see, I see a dad that is being super present with their kid. They lean down if their kid's having a really difficult moment or something. It's not necessarily like, gee, I've never thought of that. But not only do I appreciate seeing other dads out there dealing with their kids if they have a difficult moment kneeling down and having the conversation with them. But it's just always a good reminder to be as present as you can be with your kids. Because sometimes your kids are just having a really difficult moment. I'm so (laughs) spicy. You know, the days get away from you. And sometimes my emotions get away from me in a way that I get like, I'm, my wife will sometimes ask me, you know, if I'm having a hard day or a long day, she's like, 
need to go for a walk. Yeah. Your fuse is pretty short today. Yeah. Where I'm like already maybe taking out a little bit of my frustration with the kids or something like that. Yeah. And so I always appreciate seeing other dads, especially Mm -hmm. doing a good job with their kids. I really should have said the airport thing because it's a really good one. (laughs) (laughs) The the cart that you use, it's like a suitcase thing. You put the stick, the car seat on there and they can wheel the kid when they're strapped into the car seat around the airport. When we saw that. You've told it on a third of our podcasts. It's brilliant. And ours (laughs) broke. Ours broke this last trip and I was so bummed about it. And we're right close to maybe not needing the car seat anymore. So I don't know whether or not we buy one mm. or not. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. All right. Shall <sighs> we move on? You feel that one? Yeah. Yeah, it's there. That one's burning now. Yeah. And we still have four left. Yeah. Yep. We're heating up here. How about a question so we can think about something else? Uh, Are you kidding me? Of course. <laughs> They didn't have the internet or podcasts to listen to. Talk about flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah, my dad told one once on a Father's Day, and I don't remember it now, and I'm bummed about it. What A, a dumb dad moment he had? Yeah, I, I, I was spending Father's Day with him, and I went live Uh huh. on social media. And he, oh, he's there with you. I was like, tell a dumb dad moment. And he told him. I don't remember it. I know. I mean, my dad had me over with his... Uh, I had me over. My dad had me over to hang out. He invited me to stay for 18 years. It's getting to me, Kevin. Had one of his friends over, and he was like pretty sure I couldn't move yet, so he just left me on the carpet by myself. And uh, uh-huh. he came back into the room, and I was like devouring an ashtray, just eating cigarette butts and ash. Oh. That's a dumb dad moment, not paying enough attention. And I was, he had me over the sink, like just <laughs> washing water out of my mouth. <laughs> get it he out of my mouth. the toilet, which was nice. It's thoughtful of him. You know, yeah. Cigarettes are good on the Cigarette. Side. Uh, butts Let's are probably pretty uh, spicy. Let's just keep going. All right. Next one. This one. Jalapeno Chico. You eat the wing, I'll ask a question, and then I'll answer the question as well. This is for both of us. Uh-huh. This is from uh, Ellen AOC815 on IG. I'm not really sure. Ellen DeGeneres. You know, some of Alexandria these. Alexandria Thank you. you. Appreciate you, Ellen Cortez. DeGeneres, for Cortez. Submitting a question to our show. Uh huh. If you could play any fictional dad, oh, who would it be? Did I like, play any fictional dad? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a problem. You know what they say: a moment on the lips, an hour and a half in the bathroom. <laughs> Nobody says that. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. I mean, Phil Dumphy is pretty great. Um, it's funny. All like the dads. Um, Uncle Phil. Um, oh, who's the dad from Family Matters? Carl Winslow. Carl Winslow. Carl Winslow. Thank you. Uh, he was great. Honestly, I mean, Dick Van Dyke was really good. I might have to go with that. Um, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke's character on the Dick Van Dyke Show, whose name is escaping me because my brain's on fire. Um, yeah, he. He was great. It's in the throat. It's moving its way down. Here's the thing. Here's the thing with like... Uh, Clip that off. <laughs> Carl Winslow loved, loved him as dead, but uh-huh. I was like, no, nah, could never do that. Again, I told the dumb dad story earlier about like me just wanting to end a confrontation with a haircut. I'm not raising my voice like that man does. At no. strangers. No. But, but we'll see. My kids aren't in high school. Maybe I have a whole another Papa Bear moment. I'm trying to think of the dads that we watch on TV now. Phil Dumphy's a great shout. Because the comedy, he's competent his comedy chops, and an idiot. he's competent and an idiot is kind of like almost exactly like what we portray emotionally. Yeah. So that's a pretty good shout. If I go back to the ones as a kid, uh, one of my favorite shows as a kid was I love was, your voice changed. Was Home Improvement. <laughs> I really loved Home Improvement as a kid. It was like right in the wheelhouse of like oh, okay. TGIF, and so Tim the Toolman Taylor is a pretty funny dad. Or he tries or he wasn't he's not as bad as the dads we've made fun of growing up. He he isn't as passive as uh some of the other dads in some of the shows that we would make fun of, which led us to do this. But that he's into like tools, he's into this stuff, but he would always he'd always come with a lot of confidence, like on his show and make the mistake on television where sure. Ty gets ripped off in the router, like all that kind of stuff. It's really good physical comedy. 
on that show. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got through it, man. Oh, this is the one when everyone's been waiting for and the one that we've been dreading probably the most. We are to the sauce that is like the worst thing. The bomb. We will say this too. You can do this at home. You can have as much fun as we're having right now and order... This is, we ordered it from their website. This is like the season that they're on now, season 23. These are the sauces that they will do on the show. So season 23? It's 20, season 23, however many episodes. He's probably done more Hot Ones episodes <laughs> than we've done on our podcast. Wow. This is our first time doing it. All right, this is Da Bomb, Wing 8. <sighs> good night and good luck. <laughs> Here goes nothing. While you guys eat this one. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. He left the car seat on the roof of the car. <gasps> what? And took off driving. There was no child in the car seat. Bummer. But it freaked out the other driver. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine him driving. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. This, <coughs> this sauce is no joke. It hits later. Yeah. It's, it's ramping up, and I'm only halfway done with my wig. I popped it all in. That, I feel like that might have been the one he told me. Maybe it wasn't. God, that is really good, though. My mom, I should say, submitted my dad's dumb dad moment, which was that he took the child's car seat. Clean. <laughs> he Dude. took the uh, child's car seat and left it on top of the car with no child in it. But it really scared the drivers around him. And he was just trying to air dry his kid or something. If you're going to go in the community pool and not use a towel, then you can go on the top of the car. What a shame. What a mistake. <laughs> We have uh, milk and some water. No. Here. No. I don't know. I feel like it'll make it worse. It's all bad right now. Yeah. It's pretty bad. My mouth is on fire. <laughs> it's on fire. My lips are on fire. My throat's on fire. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. That, that, that's the bomb. The bomb. <sighs> okay, shoot. Yeah, we can take, okay. a, we can take a break here. Let's go. <laughs> like actually have the character Danny Tanner on here? Yeah. Be funny, be full of good advice. He'd have tons of advice for us and we'd have music playing underneath it. <laughs> Say something, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> fake or any dad fake or real? I mean, that's tricky. Real? I mean, I'd have to go with Barack Obama. Because I'd love to hear his dumbest dumb dad story while he's trying to run a country. That seems funny to yeah. me. Yeah. He's so poised, too. I don't picture him making a mistake. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also no excuse to, like, missing your kid's game, you know? Like, you have a presidential schedule. You yeah. can't lie and say, I showed up at the end because there's no Secret Service around. Like, there's just you know, there's no, no, no toys about it. That would be interesting for me. Is there anything, do you want to say something? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I want to have Ken Griffey Jr. on here. Okay. He's my like childhood sports hero. I want to have Ken Griffey Jr. on the podcast. Does he have kids, or are you just kind of spiraling? Pretty sure he has kids. <laughs> Ken Griffey Sr. on here with his son. There you go. We both are on here. Okay. What was it like raising Ken Griffey Jr. as a kid or as a son, an adult man? I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> this is going exactly. Am I sweating? Huh? <laughs> I mean... Throw out the shirt. Yeah, underwear is go- done too. I okay. can tell you that much right now. Let's just move on. Okay, next sauce. Next sauce. Alchemy peppers. It's a hop sauce. Watermelon ghost. Mm-hmm. He- looks fun. It looks like what a nice color. Doesn't it look like if a cartoon <laughs> made hot sauce? Yes. Like it's a fake red color. It's so. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that color before that in my color life. Color red does not exist in the real world. That's AI red. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wing nine. Wing nine. I will say, I think I'm doing better than I thought. I, I was really nervous that this was going to be like, I can't do this anymore. Careful. You're about to put wing nine in your mouth. I know. Correct. Here we go. Oh, the breathing in. You could... <coughs> oh, I just got to go for it. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. 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 You all right, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm having a great time. You got to ride home tonight? In an ambulance? 
I'm so conscious of the eyes. I haven't touched my eyes. They always say, careful of the eyes. You definitely don't want to. I've got another question for you that I wrote for you. Uh huh. You're a huge Marvel guy. Uh huh. Which char- Marvel character do you think would make a great dad and why? And which Marvel character would make a terrible dad and why? Which Marvel character would make a great dad? Yeah, and you can't cop out and say ones that maybe are dads. Like Thanos is a terrible dad. G. <laughs> Of course, he's a terrible dad. Bad step. He tortured his children. Bad stepdad. Uh, you know what, though? Look how great they turned out. You know, when they went back in time and got him because he uh-huh. murdered them. Uh huh. I mean, Captain America would be a great dad. Um, he adapts to his surroundings, would teach kids tolerance, even though he's from the 50s and probably saw some horrible, horrible stuff. Yeah. He's a war hero, and we can only imagine the things he's seen. Yeah. Um, terrible dad. Uh. Which Marvel character? Oh, character. I mean, all the bad guys would be terrible dads. I think so too. That's probably a bad part of the question. Who do you think would be a great what dad? Superhero. Do Which I think superhero would be a, make a make a cool dad? Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just Captain America. Captain America would be a cool dad. He's Captain America would strong. be a cool dad. I don't know who would be a bad dad. Um, <clears throat> Which one would be the worst one to show up? And you know, he'd constantly showing up in the school pickup line. You'll appreciate this one <laughs> in the outfit. Here's a here's a terrible dad. <laughs> Uh, Hawkeye. Uh huh. Because he keeps like coming out of retirement uh-huh. and risking his life and making his children maybe grow up without a uh-huh. dad. And they're all kind of like, we don't. What a stupid character. We don't need you. Well, not that. It's just we don't need you here. Well, I'm just offering my opinion on him. No, I know. Well, He's just a stupid character. Um, I mean, we're going into fighting aliens and we have the Hulk and Iron Man. Uh-huh. And he's like, don't worry, I have special arrows. He's a regular guy. He has no superpowers. Yeah, but if he had a Tums arrow right now. Oh, man, he could shoot me right in the mouth. <laughs> Take that. I didn't invite it. I'm going to take that as an audio clip. Okay, is this tradition around here? <laughs> last dab. Last dab. We got to do it. You got to last dab it. Dab it. Here, I'll do it. There you go. All right. Is that a good amount? It's a pretty good it amount. It feels like it's probably a pretty good amount. Okay, I, I have two questions. Um, the, the first one's an easy one and just a fun one. Um, okay, let it go here while we were, while we were doing that. Yeah. Uh, what video have you posted that you were annoyed didn't go well? What video did I post that I was annoyed it didn't go well? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, like you're like, oh come on. The first couple um, dumb dad hotlines I posted, okay, I thought were such good ideas that uh-huh. you could call a hotline when you're really struggling, and the bitch know all the answers, and you'd look so stupid calling it. Mm-hmm. They only did okay. I mean, if anything, they did. They they did not anywhere near. What I thought they were going to do. And, you know, when you post something, you think, like, I've really thought about this. Yeah. I thought about it for a couple of days. I wrote it, you know, like, with a lot of intent uh-huh. and really didn't go anywhere. I was like, we try not to get annoyed. Like, I'm not annoyed. But it's like, huh, really? Bum- <laughs> bummed. <laughs> I'm a little bummed. Yeah, sure. a little bummed it didn't go as well. Cheers. Cheers. Last dab. Here goes nothing. Here goes everything. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Ten. That's ten. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that's there. <laughs> it's all the way there. All right. Oh. I can feel it in my teeth. Uh-huh. My teeth are hot. I think all my fillings have melted. Huh? Your fillings are gone? Yeah. Okay. That was harder than anything because we did a lot on there. <laughs> With some <clears throat> <laughs> go. All right. How has the podcast changed our relationship? <clears throat> How's the podcast changed our relationship? When I first met you, you're this funny guy. We were writing sketches together, doing live shows together. And they talk often about needing to find a village build a community of parenting and weirdly we started having kids and we always wanted to work together again and so we started doing a podcast and I was never prepared for the relationship I was going to build with another father I'm struggling so much right now not emotionally (laughs) this is how I really feel about you man I love you it means so much to me to sit down and talk with you every week this is so fucking hot (laughs) sorry 
And it, I, I was never probably prepared for the, the community we would build starting this podcast, but also the community we would build with each other, how much I trust you as a friend, <clears throat> and another writer, and a comedian, and another father that I can sit down and talk to. I'm better for you, better for knowing you, and better for sitting down and talking to you each week. You say you're better for me? I don't know. I'm not, I have no idea what I said. <sighs> I'll let you know. <laughs> It's just better if you don't move. I think so. Um, I want to run away <laughs> from the spiciness. It's definitely been better for our relationship. It's been better for me as a father because uh, the community we built, getting to talk to people, getting to talk to you. I don't think I would share as much about a father in general if we hadn't started this journey. Yeah. So I think that's brought us closer together. A lot of spit almost just came out of my mouth. <laughs> um, I feel like my eyes are like a lot of water. My eyes are sweating. But yeah, I, I would say uh, it's helped our relationship because we've been more open about our struggles uh, as parents uh-huh. in the comedic <clears throat> way. But on the podcast, which was the question, we're more open about like the more serious stuff, my anxiety, uh, my failures, which even though we laugh at them, is still kind of like... They're still real. They're still real. They're still real fa- failures. Still moments I'm maybe not proud of, but we're trying to laugh off. <laughs> so it's brought us closer because... Uh, you know, the stigma of men not <clears throat> sharing, dads certainly not sharing. Uh, it's nice to work on breaking that. Uh, <laughs> I can hear your wife laughing at us. <laughs> I look like a uh, one of those porcelain dolls. <laughs> like if you hit me with a hammer, I'd just chatter. So how do you think it was? <clears throat> About halfway is when it felt like, I, I feel like I'm pretty good with spicy stuff normally. Uh-huh. I like spiciness. About halfway is when it was like, this feels spicy to me. Probably five, six, and seven would be like, whoo. Where you I'm, would prefer to pull the rain. Five, six, and seven are where sometimes I like my, like, I don't know, Thai food, Indian food. Yeah. I think like, this is spicy. I take a break in between, <laughs> but I really like it. The last three, the bomb was hot. The last one was hot as hell. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it'd be like, the amount of flavor. My nose is just running. I wonder if we, oh, careful with that. Well, Put hot sauce right up the chamber. Yep. That, that might have been a mistake yeah. with a fresh napkin sitting right there. Not a great idea. Oh, no. Question. Okay. Is there another creator you really want to work with? Another creator we really want to work with? At any Leferrier. <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> you charge. A brand deal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. We, got, we were lucky enough to work with Fit Dad this year. They did our podcast. It was a fun one. Uh, uh, Adam Shapiro, he's not a creator though, but he is on social media and he's an actor. He's a really funny guy. I'd like to work with him. We should do it. Put it out there in the universe and more to come. Thank you for joining us this evening (laughs) on the podcast. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. Thank you for everybody. Everything you do for us, Uh, engaging in our videos Commenting, submitting your dumb dad, dumb parenting submissions to us, which you can always do, dumbdadpod at gmail.com, or you could DM us on Instagram. Thank you for all the support you've shown us. Uh, guys, thank you. If, if, if you're on this and you aren't subscribed to our YouTube, please, please subscribe to it. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, thank you for 200 episodes. Couldn't have done it without you guys. We love you so much. We love this community that we've built. You guys are the best. We appreciate everything you've done. Don't do this. Um... Or do it. Or film it. I don't know. Pretty fun. But that's good. Okay. It's over. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome to life. How do I stop this?